I don't know about you folks, but I have very fond memories of animated TV series from the 90s. And the best of them all, in my opinion, was Gargoyles. It had really cool characters, especially Demona, and interesting story and nice art style and all of that. It was just really awesome. So let's talk a little bit about flying fighters and what weapons they could potentially use in more realism-oriented fantasy. Still fantasy, obviously, because gargoyles and bird people and angels and whatever else might have wings that is humanoid and might be fighting. What kinds of historical weapons would be most compatible with that? And today's sponsor is also about flying fighters, although a different kind. World of Warplanes. So this is a free-to-play aerial combat game on PC and if you register for it you can actually directly support the channel. This is one of those easy to learn, difficult to master kind of games. Uh, personally I've barely played any vehicle based games but I wanted to check it out to make sure that I'm not promoting something completely unplayable. Although I didn't have much time for it, it was nice to be able to take down a few enemy planes within the first couple of matches as opposed to getting completely annihilated as a newbie. Definitely not a flight sim, it's more arcade like, pretty accessible and seems like fun gameplay so far. You can use five different types of aircraft with their own battle roles and setups and behaviors and as a sign-up bonus you get seven premium days, 500 gold, an American Curtis XP-36 Hawk with 100% crew and a personal battle mission. And if you win 10 battles on level 4 planes or higher you can get one plane slot and another premium vehicle, a level 5 boomerang with 100% crew. So give it a try, the link is in the video description down below. Okay, so winged fighters, what weapons could they use? I mean a wide variety obviously, uh, swords, spears, various pole arms in general, etc, etc. But what would be most efficient, in my opinion? I don't actually think swords would be the greatest choice. Having wings on your back would limit what you can do. Like for example, one of the most used stances in longsword fighting is Wrathguard in one form or another, whether it's like this, retracted or a little more forward. You can see the sword is just the wings will be in the way of the sword. Also, if you want to throw a really effective cut, it's good to be able to <laughs> raise the sword up high enough and retract it far enough to get proper rotation. And I made a video about the importance of a rotation for a good cut just recently, linked down below as well. So that would limit quite a bit what you can do. I mean, as a flying fighter, you have the ability to use momentum and gravity to your advantage. Basically, this is like airborne cavalry. You have the same advantages as cavalry does. The velocity of the horse in one case and of you know plunging down from a height in the other case adds a lot of energy. So it's not really necessary to retract the blade like that. You could just hold it out basically and not really use too much arm action because of all the velocity that you get from diving down from height. And that's how I would imagine flying fighters generally to operate. They would you know, rise up to a certain height and then they dive down to attack the opponent using all of that momentum that they've built up. So now, of course you could do that very much with a thrust with various kinds of sword. But I think rather than risking to accidentally cut your own wings, which could be catastrophic, why not do it hawk girl style? Some kind of blunt impact weapon, be it a flanged mace or spiked mace or studded club or uh, maybe even a flail. Something that allows you to use all that momentum easily. You would just have to basically drop the weapon in front of you and swing the arm like this and, and this all the the momentum from diving down would carry on through this. So some kind of sweeping strike like this, again similar to cavalry, would be very effective I think. Another good thing about a blunt weapon is that it wouldn't get stuck unless it has excessively long spikes I suppose, but um, you could just dive past a, a target and strike at it and just continue without you know suddenly being stopped and maybe pulled down from the sky. And of course some kind of protection would be good. Armor I don't think would be a great idea because in order to fly efficiently, even if it's just diving, it can't be too heavy. 
And so piling on a bunch of steel plate just doesn't seem feasible, even in a fantasy setting, unless they, they fly by magical means, some kind of levitation, and that wouldn't be a problem. But for protection, you could potentially use a small shield or buckler. Now, this would already add quite a bit of weight. You know, something like a, a mace and a shield or buckler adds considerable weight, at least for the purpose of flying. But I'm just going to assume that they can handle that, that they can use weapons at all. Shouldn't be as much of a problem as adding a full suit of plate armor, don't you think? So this could be used to protect the body while diving down, because if the dive attack misses and the, the opponent is able to sidestep and counter, you could be very vulnerable and exposed, of course. So this could potentially help with that. Just hold the shield in front, dive down, perform this kind of swing. Another good option I see has some pros and cons, and that is a spear. The good thing, of course, is this could be used much like cavalry. Uh, if you have a lance, it's essentially the same thing. Whether you ride on a horse or you dive down, this could very much be used. And uh, this is also what the game Vandal Hearts shows for the flying units. This would be an extremely powerful attack. You know, if you have the, the added momentum from the dive bomb, basically, this would uh, penetrate armor pretty easily, I think, for the most part. The only problem with that, of course, is this is not something that you can just you can just swoop down and attack and just be on your way because chances are the spear is going to penetrate it's going to get stuck and either you try to hold on to it and extract it while moving on you know similar to cavalry except that you're not grounded you know on a horse i mean you can obviously fall off the horse but there's something to brace against whereas if you're flying and you dive down there's just nothing really connecting you. You're just affected by gravity and you, all you have is that momentum. As soon as the momentum is gone because the force is being absorbed by the target, you might just drop. So that could be a problem. So this may be a case of fire and forget, basically, where you have disposable spears and you just dive down and stick it in, just, just leave it and just fly on. By the way, keep in mind any comparison I make with cavalry may be off because I have no experience with fighting on horseback and don't know much about cavalry, so it's it's a lot of speculation. And this may not be as much of an issue. I mean obviously cavalry wasn't known to just lose all the lances in the first charge and also in some time periods thrusting swords and sabers were used from horseback again without constantly losing the weapon so it's, it's a matter of training i suppose another option would be to throw the spear or javelin maybe have a stack of smaller javelins in some kind of quiver and just throw down from above where it's hard to defend against. This could be especially devastating if a unit of flying spear throwers sets up an ambush in the trees somewhere hidden. This makes me imagine humanoid flying foxes in the trees somewhere with their spears ready. Anyway, a sudden surprise attack from above like this throwing spears could be very effective. But I think personally if I suddenly sprouted wings and was transported to a fantasy world where I had to fight, I would probably pick something like this a blunt impact weapon and a shield of some kind. This seems particularly useful, this kind of design, because it would also be quite useful in very close quarters. So if somebody tries to grab you and pull you down, you may be able to strike with that, you know, strike with this point or thrust with it, etc. And of course, also, this still makes for a pretty good combination on foot. Shield or buckler can compensate for the poor defensive capabilities that a weapon like this has. All right, that's all I've got to say about it for right now. So let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, check out the link to World of Warplanes down below, and uh, I will see you next time.